morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Dea Bayumi. I work for EBB. I'm responsible for the product management team of Distribution Transformer globally. I reside in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, while responsible for the global team, um, have been with ABB for 19 years in several functions and then uh, currently for the last three years working on transformers. Um, today we're going to talk about the distribution transformer in general. We're going to talk about the first digital distribution transformer we launched in March. Commercial will be available end of this month. I'm going to talk to you about the journey, how we came with it, what the industry state is, and even some of the future generation we're working through right now. Feel free to ask any questions in between. We'll have time at the end also to ask any questions. Um, I don't have to go on the slides in sequence. If you have any questions, just uh, um, and you want to hold, don't want to hold it, just feel free to interrupt. So this is the landscape of our grid. And this is for some of our customers, actually, and even our colleagues in the industry, is a profound picture. Distribution transformers and transformer generators are everywhere. This is where you can see them landscaped everywhere. Distribution level, most of the clients think, or people think it's only for feeding the load um, at the residential level or in cities. But you can see they are in bar grid here for the auxiliary side. They are in offshore platforms. They are everywhere. And that's why the industry have been trying during the smart grid, during the upgrade, during the modernization of the grid to try and to monitor, control, and get data from the transformers. It's the only active element we have in the network and they really spread everywhere. When you look at the traditional grid, and many of you have seen this before, this is how transformer have been designed for the last 129 years. You have a generation, you go through transmission, distribution, you feed your load of residential or industrial. So it was a radial network pretty much. Transformers designed the same way for the last 128 years or even more, designed for this application. Our grid evolution over time became like this. You can see we have a mesh. We start adding wind and solar. We start adding EV charging station for electrical cars. There is lots of different connections in the grid right now. That's adding much more stress on the transformer. Transformer don't last as designed for 25, 30 years. And there is a lot of need now to start looking at this asset health and the grid health in a different way. So this is really require a different design or at least different monitoring and control of the transformers. You have lots of technologies around. And the industry start looking at these technologies and we're trying to see what does apply for transformer? What doesn't apply for transformer? So from the augmented reality, virtual reality, there is a lot of application right now for service. So really, really as if while you're physically here in Chicago, you can be looking at the transformer factories. You can looking at the transformer inside the transformer. There is a lot of software driven now in machine learning and AIs. There is, we have all those networks. We have lots of data that we need to filter through. Computing now is very inexpensive. You can really get a board that really can get you all the powerful computing power at much cheaper prices than before. You can do it even in cloud. People always worry about cybersecurity. We have all this connectivity. How are we going to really use even blockchain when you have all these devices as smartly enabled? So the industry is not new to trying to get digital into transformers. But if I go back here, when the industry start looking at digitizing or monitor or control of transformer, we have the distribution level generally from $1,000 a piece to eighty dollars or $90,000 with all the accessories and complication. Versus on the power side, it will start from a few hundred thousand to a few, few million dollars. Where do you think the industry went? Everyone went after the power units trying to monitor the larger assets. The problem with that, and that's not actually the problem, it's actually one of the unique challenges here is we developed as an industry on the power side in terms of monitoring and some control, while the grid on the transmission and sub-transmission side is much more stable. When you build a substation, it takes about two years. When you build an HVDC terminal, it takes even five to ten years. So there is much more planning, there is power flow calculations, there is a lot of planning, versus when you start in the distribution level, adding another neighborhood, 
adding another IKEA store, adding a terminal in the airport. How much planning you think is happening in the distribution grid? Just mostly pulling the cable, putting their permit, permits, making sure that we're up and running. So really there is much more stress on the grid, on the distribution level, less so on the transmission and the sub-transmission side. However, all the monitoring devices we have so far in the industry is focusing on the power side just because they are really a little bit more sophisticated and they're more costly from the customer perspective. So when you look at the industry and what exists right now, when we start looking at the landscape of what exists in the market, you will see we have those three categories. There is solution developed for the power side already. You have monitoring of gases, you have monitoring of voltage, current, power, everything. And then when we start feeling the challenge on the distribution network, the first direction was, let's take those solutions for the power side, try to simplify it for the distribution level. So you still have, from cost perspective, maybe $55,000 solution. You're trying to simplify it, still comes to ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 solution. Very costly for a distribution level. But not the cost of the investment of the device itself. It comes with the sophistication of how this phenomena, algorithms, gases, calculation came. It came for the power side. So while the transformer concept, distribution power the same, the phenomena, the issues, what you would like to monitor in the power is different than distribution. So communication protocols, the sophistication of the algorithms, that's the total cost to our customers. So that's where taking a power solution, trying to simplify it was not really the perfect way. That's why it's deployed in strategically what we will declare it as a critical asset or very important asset that we'd like to justify the cost of it. Bolt-on is the most successful one in the industry right now. We have in the United States about seven startup companies. Most of them got the name grid somewhere. And then what they do, they have an IED. So you have an electronic device. And then they monitor all different values between current voltage, pressure, oil level, something. The issue with this, when you look at the industry, is they are bolt-on. They come after the fact in the transformer. While it's really good for existing transformer, they require ex ex extra cabling. And then at the end, what's happening is you have a bunch of data coming your way. There's lots of raw data, and you're supposed to start mapping them and infer what's going on there. Last and not least is where there is a ground mount or chaos kind of installations, especially in Europe, Australia, and some places here also, in, in even Comet here in Chicago. Rather than having a transformer only, there was this philosophy, if you would like to use something, use the best in class of existing devices in the industry. So you want to have communication, use an RTU, remote terminal unit. You want to really start recording faults and write data and potentially write algorithms, you have relays. You would like to open and disconnect the energize the circuit, you have a breaker. And this when you start putting them all in a big container, you have a compact substation pretty much. And then some people will call it intelligent substation. Is that a digital distribution transformer? No. If you look, especially in the United States, our transformer is sitting in front of the yard. I have one in front of my home. So they are distributed everywhere pretty much with no communication. Almost 90% of them don't have communication. So what's the solution to digitize a distribution transformer that we have million of these sitting in the grid everywhere. So we looked at these existing solutions, and some of them are ABB, of course. And we said, we would like to start on a white sheet of paper. If we have the luxury of drafting everything from scratch, what do we need to do? So first, we said we need to do a proper landscaping of what do we need to monitor in a distribution transformer. So we need to know what do we need to measure. Then those have to be integrated in the transformer itself during manufacturing to give us the most accurate reading, but also to give the customer the freedom that there is no extra work on operation, installation, health and safety, or any of their other departments. So basically, we're looking for traditional transformer from installation operation, but we would like to get to monitor all the different values that make sense for distribution transformer. This means we need to have sensor that lasts as long as the transformer lasts. Sensor exists already in the industry, but most of the power side you will see that we invented new sensors or we designed new sensors. So when you look at automotive, when you look at aerospace, there is sensors and there is maturity and there is volume there for all these values. So we said we need to get that. 
The second challenge was, if we get the right values and monitor it, what are we going to do with it? So we don't want to get to the data flood that the pole to own solution you have. So we said we need to get the best industrial computing board that we can get and integrate it inside the transformer. So really, transformer will have a computer running with it so we can have a brain. And now we can start writing AI even. So we start writing not just algorithms, not static calculations. We start doing more predictive and more analytics that makes sense for the transformer and for the grid around the transformer. Couple all of this together in the transformer. This is when we launch it, this new digital distribution transformer. And this is the first release that we had in March this year. So we have pilots. I don't know if you can hear me. We have pilots around the globe that we tested in different applications. But basically, in that first release, hardware-wise, you can see we start looking at the oil temperature, ambient temperature. We're looking at the level of the oil at low level and critical level. We're looking at the pressure built up inside the tank, moisture, and hydrogen. And these are the values that we thought we really need to monitor for distribution transformer level. Voltage and current, and of course, we integrated some ancillary sensors like the RFID and GPS. This was actually always a joke that GPS, when we start working with this with the R&D community, and then we talk about GPS, and then automatically people associate GPS with what it stands for, geographical positioning or global positioning system. So basically, they say a transformer doesn't move. Why do you need a GPS? This is really the most accurate clock we have in the power industry right now. So to do a proper trending, to do a proper calculation, since we're measuring all these values and we're timing it now, we're measuring it every 10 seconds, we needed to get actually the time stamp for it. So the main purpose of the GPS here with the time stamp. But funny enough to find that it is really one of the lost assets in our industry is distribution transformer. Usually, they are being installed in a rush whenever they have hurricane. There is an outage. You really need quick replacement. You have penalties if you have an outage more than two hours. So they're really, the assets really are deployed everywhere without knowing where they are. Versus on the power side, they're sitting in a substation. They're sitting in an HVDC terminal. They're sitting in a window solar farm where there is a communication. There is identification. There is a even physical perimeter so you know where they are. So now, a side value from the pilots we have that we can find and locate the assets now, since we know we have the location there. As I mentioned, we found that 90% of transformers on the distribution level don't have communication. So we integrated a Wi-Fi inside the transformer. So when you go to one in front of my house, you will be able to communicate with this Wi-Fi, download the data, get all the information there. So that's not what the total enterprise on the power side does. We have the capability to connect to any access point um, and give you the data remotely. But since there is no infrastructure for most of these units, we enable this local Wi-Fi. So first, we get landscaping of the sensor that we need for the power. Second, we have the industrial board inside it. Now we got the Wi-Fi to able to get the communication to the customer without really touching the transformer, working with it. Then we start looking at, OK, what do we need to do? When you do landscaping around the globe and ask the customer, why are they taking oil measurement? Why are they worried about the gases? Why are they looking for temperature? The first thing they will tell you, I want to know the life of the transformer. So we start adding local inference analytics inside the transformer. So the first release we have right now, and I'm going to show you some of the future generation, will have consumed life of the transformer, and will have THED, the total harmonic distortion. And mainly is to tell the industry, we're going to start giving you inferences about the asset, the transformer, what's happening inside it. But at the same time, we're going to tell you what's happening around the grid. So the power quality is one of the key issues, of course, especially with renewable, or if you have any kind of switching or steel factors industrial application. And the key part here is the word inference. You can see that most of our industry is doing static algorithms when they do calculation. Now, with the power of having a computing board, having everything integrated in one place, we're able really to start inferring some of and predict some of the future operation and also health of the transformer. 
So it's not analytics in the way that the industry mostly using of summative analytics, where you have lots of data and you want to summarize it in a bar graph and bar graph and just make sense of the flood of data coming your way. It's more about taking lots of data, like the weather, like the hurricane trending, like the voting, and it's trying to trend and say, most likely this transformer needs a maintenance rather than you're really maintaining based on time. Most likely this transformer uptime will be degrading if you don't change the loading or do something else. So there are lots of inferences here that we're able to do because we're getting all this data also recording at the same instant. One of the other issues when you have the bolt-on solutions or getting a whole container with all the devices is you have several devices reading different data at different times. Now we're recording all the data all at the same instant. So you can see what's happening with frequency, when the pressure was changing, what's happening with the voltage, when the temperature was rising, and so forth. Really, we can infer from there. Most importantly is we have integrated Wi-Fi, so we took away the complexity of communication. So we really have wired Ethernet as well. So if the customer got uh, wireless mesh, we got LTE, we got GSM, we just can connect there and able to stream the data that way. So you have the ability to have remote monitoring if you have infrastructure for communication, otherwise you have your local Wi-Fi, and we decided to open the software as well. So we really didn't want to really lock the customer to specific software package or another. So mainly the focus here is in getting the transformer more intelligent and really make the asset itself smarter. So these are different configuration of the pilots we have around the globe now. So this is the IEC version where you can see the box with the computing board and the sensor sitting on the top, and this white small box here, or the red, I'm sorry, here, is really the communication box. That's an ANSI version here in the US, which what we call it network transformer. The only visible part of this orange ring, which gives you some of the current measurement. Um, you can see this is the majority of the installation US, and this is what we call it pad mount. The transformer sits inside the cabinet. It's closed. This is one of the operators we have in the utility. They touch the box, communicate with the device, and then they're able to download the data to their tablet, and then they can do analysis on their home offices. So basically, you can see whenever there is energization or connection transformer, it follows traditional transformer. There is nothing extra for having this digital box inside it. So cybersecurity is one of the key parts we had here. So what we have added here, in addition to compliant with the cybersecurity rule set five, keeping all the ports is able, logical and physical, if not used, and, and having a password, having a real expiration of the password, different levels, and so forth, we added three different layers of mechanism, knowing that these units are everywhere. So the Wi-Fi integrated in the unit is off by default. And then the customer will have this card, like you can see here, the RFID card, like the badge when you use it to enter an office or to enter your hotel room. When you touch the door, it unlocks the door. So they're really with the RFID are able to enable the Wi-Fi to be on. And then we can time it for a certain time with no activity, we can shut it off. So the first security level is the Wi-Fi is not on unless you have an authorized person with the RFID tag or card there. Of course, we follow that the tablet here that they're gonna use or a computer or phone will have secure certificate to communicate with the transformer. And then lastly is we added the third layer of encrypting all the data with military grade that ES-256. So we really have three layers. The Wi-Fi would be off by default unless you have access card to enable it. And if you're able to have it on, you have to have the secure certificate to communicate. But if you're able to communicate, you need to have the decryption key to be able to even decode the data and see how does it look like. And that's the tool that comes with the transformer. Basically, you can get a snapshot of all the data. You can see it in just some graphics here. Voltage current, the temperatures, the pressure, the humidity, and you have the hydrogen, the oil level when it's really low or critical. Here is the screen like the typical. If you ever use Linksys or Netgear router in the beginning and you were the IT support for your family or friends, you will actually have to do upgrades sometimes. So whenever there is new upgrade or firmware analytics, you will just browse for your file and upgrade here. Any upgrade to the security parameters or any upgrade to the data being stored there. The data will be having 
certain limits. So we actually enable in the symbol tool some events browsing there. So basically, if the customer get the voltage, current, temperature, there's some default values from IEEE here that 105 is a normal operating temperature for this unit. 125 will make it more critical, so it will move the color here to orange. And if it goes to 135, it's critical, make it red. And the customer got the ability to change these. So again, simple configurator tool. The main purpose is to just upgrade the software, upgrade the parameters here for the events, and upgrade actually the security. But the main purpose here, if you have an enterprise software where you have a view of the whole grid, you'd like to integrate the transformer data here, we can just map it to whatever the industrial plant, we mapped it to some of the enterprise software for distribution management systems. And then you get the full view of your assets wherever you see a substation, breaker, cap bank, and the transformer. So you can see the focus again was not to get into the software or get into the communication, is really how we make this transformer with a brain able to speak and being more intelligent to make the grid smarter. Now this list is not just values. This actually is part of the analytics that we're working on for the future generation. So here you can see for residential, commercial, which mostly utilities, there is a focus on reducing maintenance costs, inventory, getting outage notification, and revenue protection or energy theft. So how are we are going to help here? So by having really the transformer maintenance data, we're able to space out the customer really going to the maintenance in a regular basis. So one of the pilots we have, a unit is sitting in a vault in one of the largest cities we have here. If you've ever been to a transformer vault, it's really a very nasty environment. It's underground, there is lots of other utility pipes and things running there, lots of gases, lots of issues there. Operator used to go there on a monthly basis and get data. So now they're able to communicate wirelessly with the transformer and get data every six months, every three months. They can space out their maintenance. Most importantly, we don't have to send a human being down in this nasty environment and really get to suffer all the gases whenever you open the vault. Lots of customers now have stock items. They know distribution transformer is going to fail because of corrosion, because of heat, because of lightning, because of some issues. So they always have a storage in their inventory. And that storage actually sometimes rusts for years before they even deploy it. So now since we know the uptime of the network, we can tell them there will be a number. This transformer is consumed, it's 15 years old, or this transformer is 20 years old. Then there is a planned inventory right now that maybe can span to a year or two rather than several years. Outage notification is something customers get now from wireless meters. But the issue is the wireless meter were deployed mostly on the residential level. They were not deployed as much widely on industrial level. So when you have the typical uh, joke about Murphy Law, that whenever you have an outage, when it happens, it happens on a weekend, it happens on a holiday, it happens on Christmas Eve and so forth. So most of the industrial customers, sometimes they face outage on a Saturday or a Sunday, and then the customer doesn't know. Residential customer, they either call right away or they have the wireless meter. Then you come Monday, the elevator is not working. If you have an IT server, it's still in-house, it's not working, air condition is not working. There are already many cases we have use cases where customer lost half a day of productivity. So outage notification is something that they can get right away if there is wireless communication once the transformer is off. They don't have to wait for a call from the residential or even the industrial customer. Revenue protection with the intriguing one. That actually Western United States and Italy were the two countries that have it the most. This is when people are stealing energy. And the typical theft is happening at the transformer level because really there is no meter there. But now we're measuring all the data running the transformer every 10 seconds. So we can really revenue or measure the revenue every 10 seconds what's running through the transformer. Compare it against your bill. You know there is an energy theft there. So there is, there is actually lots of departments now in utilities that they call it revenue protection. It's really getting growing as a, a bigger issue here. Same thing for renewable. There is lots of issues with the system efficiency. Of course, you have the cyclic nature with the wind. You have the sun changes, and that's why the solar, sometimes they have it mobile right now. So if you want to know really how much efficiency do you have, we're able now with the THD and the high sampling rate we have to even run sophisticated algorithms that used to run only under enterprise software. It wouldn't run in the computer 
integrated in a transformer before. Network quality. Voltage monitoring is another unique one. So typically, you will see the approach and the thinking is through analysis. If you have a voltage, if you have a renewable penetration, you have EV charging station, you will have a voltage drop issue. So in Germany, in Hawaii, in California, there is lots of installation of voltage regulating devices. Two years or three years into it now, we were thinking we're solving a problem, we start generating a different problem. Now we have several devices that need coordination because now we have all of these devices automatically operating, but they need coordination. They need maintenance, they need also some really level of um, upgrade themselves. So the real issue here is through the monitoring now, we need really to see just because you have EV charging station, just because there is really um, solar or rooftop solar or utility grade solar, do you really have a voltage monitoring problem or not? Do you have a voltage drop problem? And if you do, you need to know, do you do it during what season? Do you have it during the summer, during the winter? Do you do it during the day, during the night? And then you can take the proper action. So the action we have been taking was based on assumption and offline analysis. Now can move to real time and we say, maybe I need to reconfigure this network. Maybe I need to add a cap bank. Or maybe do I do need the voltage monitoring regulator of some sort. So that one actually is one of the future analytics that we'll have in first quarter of next year. By the way, all these analytics we're going to have are going to be software upgrade. There is no other device. So we believe we have taken care of all the monitoring and landscaping of the sensing we need for a distribution level. And whatever we add later is going to be more of these algorithms and the analytics that we can just upgrade through a software. Uptime and proactive maintenance safety environmental. That's industrial oil and gas in general. So most of the offshore platform, you will see they have an extra transformer sitting on the platform just because they cannot afford downtime. Most of the industrial application are using 80% of the transformer, which is really a big waste of all this material, all this equipment, because they don't want to get to a level where the transformer will degrade and then they can lose the power. So it's really uptime is a big deal. But now, since we can monitor all the values inside the transformer, we are able to tell the customer, your uptime is at 90%, is at 99%. Potentially, we need to change something in the transformer. You need to proactively go to maintenance. Maintenance right now, and even on the power side, is still time-based. Every six months, you need to do something. Every three months, you need to do something. But if you think about it, if you're really able to monitor the oil and see what's happening inside the liquid fill transfor oil transformer, what's happening with the insulation, what's happening with everything else, you can really do a predictive maintenance like we do in our cars right now. The car, we used to change the oil every 3,000 miles, every three months. Some cars improved it to 7,000. Most of the cars now got sensors and will tell you, based on your driving habits, based on the conditions of the environment, you need to change the oil every 10, 15, 7,000, whatever the conditions might be. So the proactive maintenance approach will finally start getting EV into the distribution level. Safety and environmental, of course, if the transformer is getting to a point where there are certain gases or getting to a level where there are certain leaks that you need to really disengage before you have leak and environmental issue or a failure, of course, we're able to predict that as well. You can see the ranking also here is really based on the segment from all these customer use cases we have around the globe. It doesn't mean that safety is not important for the residential and commercial, but it means that the industry here is much more mature. They're, they're able to shut down um, multi-million dollar production just because somebody wasn't following a simple procedure in safety. There is no simple, there is no tolerance, there is more maturity there. Versus in the, in, in the utility side, the, the maturity of safety is still building up. So you will see that they will be asking for this first versus safety here first. So the analytics are going to be launched based on the segment for the customers and then mainly to really focus on why we have this rather than how we're having this. So the whole movement here is to move it from focusing the sensors and really what they make up from and what values the sensor have and milliamps and everything and component based to really what does it do for the industry and how can we move this industry through digitalization to value based kind of transform. Questions, I was speaking really fast. Yes, sir.
original transformer new? The question is how much the digital distribution transformer costs versus the new. Uh, we will have the pricing in two weeks. So in two weeks, either contact me or um, if you have a regional factory, I mean, all the factors will have. Um, the pricing will be for, I can give you just a general philosophy. The hardware is nothing. It's really the focus will be on what value does it do through this analytics to each customer. So it's going to be more on different packages and menu option and how you choose from these and what does it mean to each customer, but I don't have it um, available yet. So. or internal shutdown devices or something that correlates with all of this information? Or does it have to go to somebody else's brain to make that decision? It, it's, it's not going to go to somebody else's brain. The question is, um, I mentioned that monitoring, then control. And there is nothing here mentioned about control. So are we using somebody else's brain? Or is it going to go to somebody else's muscle but not brain? So the brain will be here. It can go to somebody else's brain. What I mean by brain is we have already in this hardware the output hardware integrated here. So we're able to send the signal out. The signal out can be as simple as notification to the customer through messaging. It can go to the email system. It can go to their control loop. In the oil and gas industrial side, we send it to the control loop. And yes, they are using their brain to assess do they need to de-energize or do something else or not. Um, in many cases, we'll have the brain here where we are able to disengage a switch if the transformer reach a violation of operating limits. And we need really to prevent a leak or prevent an explosion and so forth. Um, the issue here is, and if you have been in the relay business also, the customer was very um, conservative in moving from solid state to digital relays because really it just was misoperation is as bad as um, really operation. I mean, really nobody wants to afford this misoperation or really the headache of having faults. So majority of the cases we have right now, customer want just to monitor and get used to it. Very few customer, the so-called, at least in our technical community, progressive want to do an act. We have customers actually that would like really to disengage the breaker right away as long as they bought the limits of the parameters and the control what they would like to do. So the brain will be here, can move to somebody else, but the muscles, the action will be somebody else, of course. We have some other applications where actually we're using um, loosely drones right now. So the transformer is about 40 miles away from any human beings to do really a safety check. You really have to send a truck. So we are sending a drone, and since we have the GPS that allowed us to give the coordinates, and then you're able to go collect the data and come back. So um, is it going to be the bulk of the application most likely not but certain application we have it actually it's in the u.s here the pilot we have so so the possibilities are really open and this is where i'm really happy to share it with the whole team here because we really need to get the brains of the whole industry and see what else can we do we never had all this data at the same time we never had these capabilities and that's what we're inviting all the pilots we customers we have is what else can we do with this and that's how we're driving the roadmap actually for this They get you on the mic so everyone can hear the question. From which, from which flavor of uh, rating we start? 200 kVA, 300,000? Yes. So this first one, we have it up to 10 MVA. So it's really from 300 kVA, 300 kVA to 10 MVA. So this is the price of the cost. So if we start with 300 kVA and put uh, sensors and uh, these. Uh, this, this kind of communication, is it, is it cost effective to start with 300 kVA? Yes, I mean, the, the, the 300 kVA, by the way, is coming because of the size of the box. It's as big as this laptop yeah. and the footprint for the tank, less than 300 kVA is much smaller. So we have one application, which was single phase 160 kVA, but we had to larger the tank to allow this to connect. Yeah. From cost benefit, uh, if for this application for the 160, yes, it's installed in Hawaii. They needed really the monitoring, and it did make sense. So again, it goes back to, is this going to be deployed everywhere, or deployed where it makes sense for the analytics we're adding for that box? 
So cost-wise, the hardware really is really nothing. It's integrated in the distribution level. It's all about what you would like to do with all the sensing capabilities and if some of them make sense or not. For example, hydrogen would make sense for 160 kVA and that's the big bulk of the cost. And then the computing board is not that expensive, but if you go through the other sensor, do you really need to moisture and do you need temperature, do you need voltage? And we just configure it this way. And another question for the losses. Is there any... Uh any uh, adding th uh, th this kind of sensor, you can measure the losses for the transformer and uh, give what, what kind of action to be taken? Yes. So that's one of also the future analytic, and that's why we call it network efficiency. So we're not focused on the transformer losses like traditionally we did of improving the box itself. So making the covers better or the, the aluminum versus the core and how we do the design. We're focusing on to see where the loss is coming from. Some of it is really harmonics. It's causing really more heat and damping. And then we will have enough insight to see what action needs to be taken. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Is the software system something that could be exported to somebody else's transformers? or is it always integrated? The software the meaning... Sensor, the whole added package, is that something, if somebody could just buy that package and oh. put it on their own transformer? No, I mean, technically it can. Uh, we are not allowing it from EBV, we're just putting an EBV transformer. But then we are asking the industry to start asking all the other vendors to come up with something integrated the same way. So hopefully that movement will make all the transformer as a standard package. I mean, our vision is to have this as a standard in every single transformer. Like, your car doesn't come without an oil sensor anymore. I mean, really, that's the movement that we're moving towards. But it's currently commercially available only for EBB transformers. So. Was it that clear? No more questions? All right, thank you. I'm still around if you have any questions or bake a card from here from Chloe and thank you really all. Thank you.